Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Tech Motoring. On today's episode, we're going to be reviewing this. This is the Segway 9Bot Kick Scooter Max, also known as the G30. Now this is the top of the line scooter for the Kick Scooter class that Segway sells. And is this scooter really worth the price tag that it holds? Well, we're going to go over all that and more in just a second. So hit that subscribe button and stay tuned. We're coming right back at you. All right, everybody, well, welcome back. So like I said, we are gonna be taking a look at this, the Segway 9Bot Kick Scooter Max. So this is one of Segway's most premium scooters that they do currently sell on the market. Now they just recently released those higher performance GT models, but those are in a completely different line than this. This is in the kick scooter line that they sell. And uh, we're gonna go over everything about the scooter and how well it works. And I've had a, this scooter for a little over a year now actually. And so I felt like I need to give this a really thorough review and whether or not this is worth the price. Now. For the last couple of years, you may have noticed that the whole mobility market, e-mobility market has really taken off. And that was mainly due to the pandemic that caused a lot of people to get out and buy bicycles. And then maybe they decided they wanted to go a little further and move to e-bikes. And then of course the scooter market started to explode at the same time. And then people started realizing that with the high price of gas, most recently that these are actually a really good alternative if you are looking for something that's close to home travels like if you have a short commute to work or if maybe you just need to run out to a store real quick and pick something up and come back instead of sitting in a car and wasting gas potentially getting stuck in traffic you can use one of these things and get in and out of traffic pretty easily or even just on sidewalks if it's allowed in your area so these are really interesting. Now, you can't really compare scooters to e-bikes. They are completely different class in my opinion. These are not really designed to go anything other than flat surfaces that are basically, you know, paved asphalt. These can't really do much off-roading as far as, you know, going over grass. This will struggle going over even just a little bit of grass. Uh, if you needed to cut through a place that had some grass, this is probably not the most ideal way of doing this. A bike or an e-bike is going to be significantly better for that. So we're going to be going over all the really cool features of this Kick Scooter Max here and show you everything that there needs to know before you go and purchase one of these if you have been in the market for this. All right, so the first thing I want to go over with the scooter here is that this build quality is actually really really good now the frame appears to be made out of mostly aluminum and you can take a good magnet and you can see it just it doesn't stick really at all to the frame um, even down here doesn't really stick it'll stick to the kickstand here but really overall this frame is made out of pretty much all aluminum as far as I can tell. But that doesn't mean that it's a light scooter. This thing weighs about 40 pounds, so it is heavy. So even though they make this a foldable scooter, which it folds very easily, all you gotta do is unlatch this, pull down this, and it's now mobile. But, oh, it is not very portable. In a pinch, if you needed to carry this up a flight of steps, yeah, this makes it real easy having the ability to fold it up and then just grab it right here and then pull it up a set of stairs. However, I wouldn't say that this is portable where you would want to throw it over your back for a long amount of time because this will hurt pretty badly after a while carrying this scooter. But that means that it's just built very well. Now most of that weight is because of the battery. Now the battery is on the very bottom of the scooter, which means it has really good center of gravity because that battery is as close to the ground that it can possibly get. Uh, and it's a 551 watt hour battery. So it's about a half a kilowatt hour, a little more than half a kilowatt hour of energy in this scooter. Now it's sister scooter, if you will, the G30 LP is basically the same exact scooter as this with a smaller battery, 
and that pretty much has a little bit less range than this and obviously that weighs a little bit less as well because of that but because of the density of that battery being so low to the ground on the scooter you really don't feel like you're going to be off balance when driving the scooter which is really really nice to to see all right and let's move over to the handlebars now the handlebars have these really really nice rubber grips they are very tight to the handlebars themselves they don't spin they don't move they seem to be holding up pretty well even after over a year um, the rubber still in good shape it doesn't seem to be cracking it seems to be really nice on the left hand side here you do have your bell that you can activate with your left thumb and also on the left hand side you have your brake which actually activates your front physical brakes on the scooter because this is a rear wheel drive in hub electric motor on the rear that has regenerative braking so when you get off the throttle it slows itself down with that regen braking which is the way to do it in my opinion have the electric motor on the back because the front's already busy enough trying to do all the steering so this is definitely the way to do that i'm glad they did it that way you also have up here on the right hand side is your thumb throttle now now, a lot of people would probably prefer to have a twist throttle, but honestly, the thumb throttle is really the way to go, especially on something like this, where you have to usually hold down that thumb throttle for a while to get where you need to go. I always feel like a twist throttle makes your wrist a little cramped after a while, but you do have a thumb throttle. There is actually a cruise control function on the scooter where it allow you to hold down the throttle for a certain amount of seconds and it will turn on cruise control. So you can actually just let go of the throttle and it will continue to go at the speed that you adjusted uh, when you were holding down the throttle, which is a really nice feature. However, I didn't like it very much because I felt like I lost control of the scooter a little bit and I would rather have the ability to change the throttle based off of what I needed in the moment as opposed to trying to remember how to disable the uh, cruise control. But I turned that off immediately. I did not like that. In fact, that it's on by it was on by default when I first got this and it really kind of scared me um, when it activated, <laughs> it just decided to go on its own and that was a little weird at first. Uh, you do have this really nice screen up here. The power button is located right here. This turns on the screen, which has your speedometer. Just underneath of that are your mode selects. So you have three different modes in this scooter. You have your eco mode, which has a top speed of about nine miles per hour. You have your drive mode, which is like your middle or standard mode and that has a max speed of about 15 miles per hour and of course you have your uh, sport mode which if you put it into sport mode that'll get you up to about the max speed of about 19 miles per hour which does feel to be a software limited 19 miles per hour because it does get there pretty quickly and it does hold that number pretty well without having any problems holding that number so i really believe that this scooter could probably do a little bit more speed just it's limited by Segway uh, on software. At least I assume it is. Underneath that, you do have your battery meter, which has five bars, each bar representing 20% of the battery uh, capacity. So that gives you a quick idea of about how much battery you have left in your scooter as you're driving. Of course, you can always reference the mobile app itself on your phone for the exact percentage. You do have a couple controls from this single button up here. The double tap of that single button switches you between the different drive modes. So if you wanted to go from Eco to just the standard mode, just double tap and it moves into that drive mode or that default mode. So you can use that. And if you single tap, you actually get your headlight, which is actually a pretty decent headlight. I've used it at night once or twice just around the neighborhood just to have it on and uh, it it does help a little bit. It's more or less for people to see you more than you to see them or to see the road. I believe it's a nice feature to have just in case you ever get stuck in the dark and you need a little bit more light just so people can see you. I think that's a, a really nice feature. Plus, it really doesn't take much of the battery. It's just a small LED light on the front of the scooter. Speaking of lights, it also has a rear tail light, as you can see here. Uh, that rear tail light 
you can set to have always on, which is what I do. So this way you always have a light on on the back of the scooter regardless. That's actually a really nice feature to have. It's just a little more visibility out on the road so people see you. Um, it also activates as a brake light. So if you were to hit the brakes, it does flash to let people know that you are coming to a stop, similar to how some vehicles nowadays have the flashing third brake light for when you're coming to a stop, when you're depressing the brake. Well, that's pretty much all we have up here. So let's get down now to the bottom half of the scooter. All right, so here we are towards the bottom of the scooter now. I figured this was a lot easier to just lift it up on a table. So here we can see the beautiful construction quality of this scooter. Beautiful welds on the construction of the scooter. They did a really nice job of putting together the steel pieces and making sure that it is one really sturdy, strong uh, scooter and it doesn't have any type of flex to it when you're driving it. And for sure, it does not feel like it flexes at all. Right here, we do have the quick disconnect or the quick folding abilities. So there is a plastic uh, locking mechanism right here, which you could unlock at this collar. And then you pull down this front piece here and that allows you to fold the scooter. And then this little latch that is actually attached to the handlebars grabs this piece that's on the back fender, which then allows you to lift the scooter. Once again, over 40 pounds, this scooter is quite a bit. It's not something that you're going to be lifting a lot and just carrying around town because it's you know, easy, it's it's not, it's, it's pretty heavy. This little area right here up front, um, this is probably one of the biggest pain points a lot of people have with these scooters is because there is a bit of a vibration in this area that a lot of people don't like because it makes a lot of noise. Um, you know, it's not bad, it's not terrible. If you're on a road that's really, really, um, you know, loud, maybe there's a lot of bumps or a little, little bit of um, less smoothness to it, let's say, uh, you do tend to hear a little bit of rattling coming from this area right here. And that can be annoying at some times, but overall, honestly, it's not the end of the world. I know some people have made a little shims that they put in here to try to tighten that a little bit so you don't have so much of a, a vibrating sound here, but honestly, it's, it's really overall not that bad. 10 inch pneumatic tires on the front and rear. Um, once again, these are puncture proof to a degree. Uh, they are air filled tires as well. So you do have to check them for their air pressure every once in a while. They don't take very much air. So it's very quick to just fill them. Um, especially if you're coming from like a larger compressor, you wanna be very careful filling these tires because they fill like that. It's crazy. Um, but they do have air valves on them for easy filling. So you can easily fill these tires right up um, just before you go on. There is a PSI recommendation for how much you should fill them up. It's very tough to get it <laughs> right on because of how little air they actually take inside the tire. Um, but you know, you'd have to do your best just to kind of get to that spot of that much pressure. So 10 inch pneumatic tires front and rear. Once again, 350 watt in hub electric motor on the rear. Awesome to see that. Um, I really like the fact that it's an in hub motor so you don't have any type of electric motor out on the outside of the scooter, which makes it a lot easier for, well, not hitting an electric motor up against anything, scraping it, whatever the case may be. Uh, this, you can see the battery right here. It's a pretty sizable battery, it goes the good length of the entire uh, standing area here. And, uh, you know, once again, 551 watt hours of energy. So it is quite a bit of energy. And they do say that this scooter gets about 40 miles per charge. Now, obviously that rating is probably based off of driving it on eco mode and not so much sport mode. Um, I did do a short test a while back of just a day out, um, getting used to the scooter and kind of just driving it around on different modes. And I kind of go over the efficiency of, you know, between those different modes and how well it did. And I'll link that up here if you have any interest. It's not a full 100 to 0%, but it just kind of gives you a, a generic idea of what this scooter is, is capable of. Um, and that's really, really use case scenario. It's not necessarily a range test, but it kind of gives you an idea of, of exactly what the scooter's capable of if you were to just go out and about and use it and play with it and use different, uh, different modes and stuff for your driving. 
One of my biggest gripes on this is actually the, uh, the fenders. They're actually plastic. The fronts and the rears are actually both plastic fenders, which, you know, it's not a big deal, but I always feel like this uh, plastic fender back here is just a bit, a bit unsturdy. And I feel like this can get broken pretty easily, um, especially if you have a tendency of resting your back foot back on the fender. Um, I know a lot of people used to do that back in the day, the old Razor scooters, the brakes used to be on the back fender. So some people have that habit of keeping their foot towards the back fender or on the back fender. Um, yeah, you gotta try to avoid doing that on this because this is plastic. And so if you put a little too much pressure on that back fender, you're gonna end up just cracking that fender. So you gotta be careful with that. Kind of wish they made this out of a, a piece of aluminum as well. Um, the front fender, no big deal either way. Plastic is fine, but like this back one really needs to be a little more sturdy in my opinion. So this way it has uh, you know, a little bit more sturdiness and it probably won't break as easily. As you can see, we do have some high visibility stickers on the front and rear of the scooter as well. So this way, at least if you are driving at nighttime um, and somebody comes up the side, they can at least see high visibility stickers along the side of the scooter. The rubber mat is very good. I've never had an issue with sliding off of it or hitting a bump and almost losing my footing. Like this is very good rubber. It does keep your feet to the scooter at all times. I really haven't had any issues with that. Now included with the scooter is just a standard 110 volt cable. Um, this cable is used because it does have a built-in charger, which is very convenient because that means that if you ever need to bring your charger with you, you're really just bringing just a standard 110 volt power cable. It all gets converted internally to the scooter itself, which is nice, except for the fact that now you're carrying a little bit more weight having that charger built in. The charging is right here on the base uh, on this side and there you'll notice that there's actually two ports there. So one port is for that aforementioned plug that plugs in, charges AC power into the built-in charger which then uh, converts it to DC to the battery. And there's also another port here, which is actually for a DC charger. So you can actually DC charge this scooter. Now I'm not really sure what the benefit of that is other than the fact that it may charge it faster because it doesn't have to convert the electricity from AC to DC. It still has to do it, but it most likely does it externally with a power brick um, versus having to allow the internal charger to convert the electricity from AC to DC, which you know, might be better for heat if you're for some reason charging it up and then driving and charging it up and driving. But I'm not really sure the purpose of it. And honestly, I don't think anybody really needs to use the DC fast charging plug. I think that the AC is perfectly fine. Speaking of AC power, charges about three amps. So takes about from dead to full about six hours, or at least that's what Segway is advertising about six hours to charge it up. So it's definitely one of those scooters that if you're deciding to go out for the day, you can probably wake up in the morning, plug the scooter in, get yourself ready, and you'll probably have a decent charge on it um, within an hour or two, and then you can get out on the road and start enjoying it. And like with most lithium batteries, it's best not to keep these fully charged. So obviously you don't wanna fully charge this and then let it sit for weeks at a time. You always wanna use the battery uh, as much as you possibly can, get it down to that 50% mark, give or take a little bit uh, before you store the scooter. So always keep that in mind that 100% battery is fine if you're gonna use it immediately and go out, but for the health of the battery, for the health of the scooter, you probably want to keep this thing when stored between, you know, 40 and 60%. And then once you need it, plug it in, charge it up, get out there and use that battery. So just keep that in mind. If you're going to have the scooter for a long time, you want to make sure you keep the battery as healthy as possible. All right, so now let's talk about some of the negatives of the scooter. And there's one big elephant in the room when it comes to the negative for the scooter, and that is lack of suspension. This scooter really, really needs to have some sort of active suspension on it. It can be pretty brutal at times driving the scooter on certain types of roads, depending on if they're haven't been, um, you know, re-asphalted in a long time. It can vibrate pretty badly, especially at higher speeds. Um, one of my biggest concerns is without having front suspension is hitting 
a transition, especially if you're on like a sidewalk. Um, sometimes, you know, your sidewalks are not exactly even and you come up to a transition, you may not realize it and you hit it and wow, what a moment that you don't want to be a part of. There was one incident where I was driving the scooter on a sidewalk, hit a transition and I nearly lost control of the scooter because of that transition. Had there been a little bit of front suspension, that probably would not have happened or as happened as bad as it actually did. Thankfully, I didn't lose the scooter. I was able to regain control, but one of my hands did actually come off the handlebar completely. These tires, they're not very good at absorbing um, a lot of bigger bumps. Uh, some smaller bumps, yeah, but for, for larger bumps, they are pretty rough. So really, I think the biggest miss here is if you're going to be on a scooter and you're going to be doing about 20 miles an hour or close to 20 miles an hour, you really do need some sort of active suspension. There are some third party modifications out there that you can buy to, to add suspension. Um, and you know, they're, they're okay as far as I could tell from the reviews, but I haven't decided whether or not I wanted to try one of those. And you know, maybe it's not worth the investment because it also is extra weight. So you're talking about a 40 something pound scooter. It's going to be, you know, even a couple more pounds after that. Um, you know, so you're adding more weight, you're taking away range from your scooter. So this is one of those things that you really got to be a little careful about uh, when you're driving the scooter is that if you do hit something, um, that you don't realize, and this is a big thing about, you know, the difference between a bike and a scooter is that because you have such small tires, um, you don't have as much absorbing with that. So do be careful if you are one of these, just make sure that you're coming across any type of, you know, terrain that might be a little bit dangerous or slippery or something. As far as the grip of the tires, the tires are actually really good. I have no concern going over any type of uh, wet, asphalt or going over any type of like sandy or, or dusty asphalt. I mean, where we live here, we live close to the ocean. So we have a lot of sand everywhere. And you know, usually you'll find little pockets of sand on the road every once in a while. And honestly, going over those at first was a little bit concerning, but you go over them and you don't even really notice that they're there. Your tires don't slip. You don't really have any loss of control when going over them. So I feel like, you know, the treads of the tires do a good job of keeping it stable and on the road. Good for that. At least, you know, you feel a little bit confident. Uh, you're not going to slide the scooter out because you hit a little pocket of uh, dust or dirt or sand on the road. So that's nice. Of course, you do have to watch out for some larger debris. Um, you want to make sure you don't hit any rocks because rocks can uh, either pop a tire or you know obviously you can lose a little bit of control if you hit a larger enough rock all right and the last thing i want to discuss is the app so in order to set up the scooter you do need to download the application to your phone the segway app really simple and then you do need to activate and register the scooter on the app now the other thing the app allows you to do is change some settings on the scooter itself so you do have the strength of your regen braking that you can adjust. Uh, you can enable or disable the cruise control feature that I had mentioned before. Of course, the scooter is capable of firmware updates as well. And Segway does send out firmware updates for this particular scooter every couple months or so. Unfortunately, the release notes are very um, just vague and un unhelpful in, in every way. It's pretty much just bug fixes and stability fixes. That's pretty much just what they put into their firmware updates, but they do control um, some aspects of the scooter. I haven't had any issues with those since I've done them. And the firmware updates only take about three to five minutes. The app also gives you the ability to see the exact percentage of your battery. It also allows you to see the uh, range left on the scooter, obviously an estimate of the range left of the scooter. And it also shows you the uh, mileage basically it's like the odometer of the scooter so it actually shows you how many miles you've put on the scooter since it was new but overall i would say that in the past year i've enjoyed the scooter very much i've taken it out on some you know decently long road trips and i've had some really good luck with the the longevity of the battery the distance everything's been really good so the question now is this scooter 
worth the price that it is. Now the price has gone up since I purchased it a little over a year ago. So the question is, is it still worth the price today? And do you have a purpose for it? Is this something that you're gonna to use to commute back and forth and work? Then probably a really good investment. Is it something you can use around town just to kill some time on the weekends and have some fun? Yeah, of course, this scooter is great for that. So this scooter is great. I'm gonna to continue to use it and enjoy using it as much as I possibly can, and I can't wait to get out more often on it. Now, if you have one of these scooters already, or if you have any type of e-scooter out there, let me know in the comments what you use it for primarily. Is it your commuter vehicle or is it your pleasure vehicle that you use on the weekends to go around town? Or do you use it to run errands in? You know, I usually just throw a backpack on every time I use this just in case I need to pick something up. It's actually really good for garage sales. I've done that a couple times. You take it out and uh, hit a couple garage sales. And if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up just below. If you're not a subscriber to Tech Motoring, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button just below. Don't forget to check us out on our website, techmotoring.com, facebook.com slash techmotoring, on Twitter, at techmotoring. I'd like to thank you again very much for watching today's episode. And remember, welcome to the future and welcome to Tech Motoring. And we'll see you on the next episode.